TGR. It has been a long, 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 long time since we've heard anything about Metroid Prime 4. In fact, I would say that it's been a long time since we've heard about any Metroid game in the Metroid Prime series. The last one was, if, if you would even consider it, a release 2009, which was the Metroid Prime Trilogy Collection. Metroid Prime 3 was actually released two years before that. That being said, there's a lot of things that I love and a lot of things that I hate about the Metroid Prime games, but looking forward into the future, looking and seeing past the horizon, there are some things that I would love to see within the world and guys this is an open discussion so if there is something that you want to see in the next metroid prime game let us know in the comments below i'd love to hear your thoughts and what you want in that title if there's anything that I could say that I want more than anything else, it's to have the sense of world building that we saw in Metroid Prime 1. In Metroid Prime 2, 3, and even other M, there's kind of this almost hand-holding when it came to the story. There was kind of this over-the-top, hey, let me tell you about our lore and show you everything in all of the cutscenes, which is fine. I can appreciate that. And I think that Metroid Prime 2 had a nice balance between the two. But with Metroid Prime 3, it was almost a little over the top. It almost felt like we were playing Skyward Sword, which I haven't yet, but I just know the history behind it. That being said, I would love it to be more of, hey, here's a cutscene, here's all this and that, but if you really want to get deeper into the lore, scan things and read things and just kind of peel away the layers of all that's going on in this world and all that has happened with the Chozo, because we know the Chozo are gonna be there. The Chozo are always there. If there's one thing that I can say is that I want to have that same sense of isolation and kind of just loneliness that came with Metroid Prime 1. With Metroid Prime 1, there was no hand-holding. You kind of just explored and you did things as you went. There was no character that was telling you, hey, this is the next part that you had, and that was that. It was more of, hey, this is the next interesting location, and there were markers and things like that, but nothing that was over the top and hand holding. Metroid Prime 2 and Metroid Prime 3, there was a lot more hand holding, a lot more storytelling, lore sharing, so to speak. And it was fine. I'm okay with that, but I just still wanted to kind of like have my own route and explore things at my own pace without having an exact marker that was shown every single time. I know that it was there in Metroid Prime 1, but still, not every single time. I kind of wanted to explore things at my own pace. One thing that I've loved, especially since Dark Souls, is having this open world that is slowly and methodically opened up and then connecting with other places that you've been to in the past. I think that Metroid has an opportunity to really do this beautifully. If we can go ahead and have a world that has the scope of, let's say, Breath of the Wild, or even Odyssey in the grand scheme of things, but connected in a beautifully, methodically crafted and designed world like Dark Souls, then we could really, really have an amazing opportunity to kind of just have this traversal and kind of connecting and weaving sort of patterns and everything that would just be really, really cool, man. If they really, really nail it, it would just be awesome. I really think that combat can be brushed up, so to speak, or at least modernized. I went back to play Metroid Prime 1 when I was testing out the Retro Tink 2X, and I immediately saw how archaic some of the controls were, but I feel like that was a result of the age or at least the era that the game was designed in and also the controller that was there. There was some button limitations that were there, but with the Switch Pro controller and the layout of the Switch itself, there is an opportunity to actually modernize the first person SKU and to kind of bring that up to date. In regards to modernizing things, I think that we could have some form of modern strafing or targeting that we've seen in other titles. I do like the way that things were handled with the Wii, obviously, but the Wii, that's motion controls and things like that. I don't know how that's going to work in regards to games today. Maybe with the gyroscope, I'm not sure, but I do think that there is potential here to really have an awesome first person adventure Metroid because that's what Metroid games are. I do think that we should have some form of new weapons. We haven't really had anything change in a very long time. When it came to Metroid Samus Returns, there was this whole defense mechanism that was put into place where you could kind of deflect an enemy's attack and go in for a parry and then go in for a riposte, so to speak. And I think that that was really brilliantly well done. I just don't see how that could work 100% in a 3D world versus a 2D world. But I think that, yeah, 
I don't know, they might be able to figure something out that would work well. I just don't really see it in the grand scheme of things and in my scope of non-developer mindset. All I want is for the combat to be really well done, to feel really good, but also marry beautifully with the traversal and overall movement within the game. I do want the movement to be there. I want the movement and the traversal to be on par with some other titles that we've seen. And I do think that Samus as a character has a lot of potential to really, really nail down some awesome moves as she goes ahead and traverses through the world and attacks her enemies. Obviously, I do want there to be things like the high jump and the screw attack and things like that that would go ahead and allow for traversal to extra areas that we haven't had access to at the beginning of the game. But nonetheless, I would like to go ahead and have some form of modernization of things. I'm not 100% sure how to word that properly, but you know what I mean. With the way that things ended with Metroid Prime 3, I would love to have a new big baddie or a new main bad guy. Don't get me wrong, I love Ridley. I love the fact that there's kind of like the squabble that's been going on forever when it comes to Samus and Ridley. But in the grand scheme of things, I do want something new, something that's a little bit more sinister in regards to anything. Maybe it's connected to Space Pirates, maybe it's not, I don't know. If Ridley is there as kind of like a side character or a side boss or something that's hidden in like an extra difficult area where Ridley's there and you don't really have to fight Ridley, it's just kind of like an extra mini boss area that you can go to and extremely difficult, I would love that. That would be awesome. But I want the main antagonist to be someone that is just new. I just want someone new. Obviously, there's not much to go on. In fact, there hasn't been anything to go on since they announced that they were going to reboot development for Metroid Prime 4 back in early 2019, and they actually handed it back to Retro Studios. And we haven't really heard anything since then. One thing that I will say is that even if we don't see a Metroid Prime 4 announcement, I would still like to see Metroid Prime Trilogy on the Switch. I would buy that in a heartbeat just so that I could replay it and re-experience the entirety of Metroid Prime. That would be awesome. So here we are waiting, wishing, and hoping, and hopefully we'll hear something at E3 this year. If not, there's always next year or the year after that, or maybe the Switch Pro launch? I don't know, we'll see. Anyways guys, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe and all that other stuff, and we will see you on the next one. Deuces. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna see more and stay up to date, subscribe, hit the little bell, and join our Discord. If you wanna support the channel, please check out our Patreon or hit the join button below. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.